Hello, friends. Welcome to the stream. I'm really, 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 really hoping that there's no audio issues today. Please let me know if there's some weird stuff with my audio going on again, if you do not remember. The last time that I streamed, I streamed, um, what was it? Motor City, and I was having some audio issues. So please let me know if that is happening again, and I will make sure to fix it. But if not, hello, friends. It's been a while. How is everybody? Happy Solo Sunday, y'all. Stacy, hello. Vortac, hello. Brian, hello. Madison, hello. George, what's up, cool kids? Not much. Jeremiah, hello. Um, I think that's Carrie, hello. Sound is good? Oh, thank God. That makes me so happy. Uh, you sound fabulous, Jenna. Oh, that makes me so incredibly happy. The only audio issues are the friends we make along the way. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> Those. Yep. Oh, my goodness. It's so funny. Chillaxing today. Same. Same. Yesterday... I made sure that I had the day to like chill. I haven't had a day where I just like did nothing for a very long time. We did have our friend's birthday party last night, but for majority of the earlier days, I I chilled. It was great. I got this new sticker by number book and I did a sticker by number, which was very therapeutic. It was great. But anyways, friends, today I'm going to be playing a game called Everstone Discovering Ignis, which a huge thank you to McDavid Publishing for sponsoring today's video. Um, Sam is the designer, uh, Sam McDavid, which um, I do have a prototype of Everstone right here. So a huge thank you to them. Um, Everstone Discovering Ignis is on Kickstarter right now. So if you guys uh, watch this and you find it um, entertaining and you find Everstone to be a game that you might like, then definitely go and check it out. Um, I will have uh, Nightbot will be posting the link every once in a while. And then also if you want the link, all you have to do is say exclamation point sponsor in the chat and you will get the link and you can go check it out. Um, I will say that this version, I think some updates have already happened. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I think Sam mentioned that he would be in chat for any questions that you guys have or for any questions that I have. Um, but yeah, I learned this one and I am very excited to play. This is a like tableau building worker placement game with some tracks that you're bumping with, you know, resource collection, all of the things that I absolutely love. Sticker by number, question mark? I am intrigued. Carrie, if you go onto Amazon and you look up sticker by number books, there are a bunch of different ones. I got this like really cute, like garden one, and it comes with like 20, 28, I think, different sticker by numbers. And oh, it's the best thing ever. It was very therapeutic. I will say that I was like hunching over the whole time, so my back kind of hurt after. But, um, you know, if you actually sit up straight and, and do it at a table or something instead of on your couch. Um, but I wanted to do it on my couch in my PJs. So, yeah, that was that. Are you guys all going to be hanging out in the Discord? You better not be talking about me, guys. Don't be... Don't be gossiping about me while I'm doing my stream. What the heck? <laughs> Hello, Sam. Welcome to the stream. So Sam is in chat. Um, hi, all. I'm lurking in the chat if anyone has questions. So yeah, if you guys do have any questions, um, definitely let Sam know and he will uh, answer them. But I'm super excited because he just recently posted or announced this really cool solo achievement um, thing that's going to be included in the game, um, which I am a huge fan of like solo achievements and stuff. I really have enjoyed all of the like Fallout games or Flat Out. Oh my goodness, Fallout games. Flat Out games. Uh, Cascadia has some like achievements in the back of the book. 
Calico, all of those. So I really appreciate him adding some different like achievements and stuff. Uh, I think that's a great add to solo variants whenever publishers do that. So good job, Sam. Most of the updates so far are in the board and relic art. Yes. Um, so I also saw, Sam, that you posted on Facebook about the like kind of layout of the relic cards. Um, interested to know if you're actually going to be like changing the layout. Honestly, like I, I find the layout to be fine. You guys will be able to see uh, when I do do a top down that all of the art on the relic cards are the same. But in the final production copy, they are going to all be different art. Um, and then I believe the board art has been changed since this one. Um, on the Kickstarter, if you guys go and check it out, the Kickstarter board is like green, greenery. Um, and this one is like a beige kind of desert. So I think the car or the uh, board art has been updated. We are a retailer for this, plus the creator is in the town right next to me. Oh, that's awesome. George, I am not on the garden discord. I've done enough to ruin camp co-op. I can't go at every server and ruin it. Brian, you wouldn't ruin the server. You would add a lot. George is talking smack about you, Jenna. Oh my God. Oh my God. Of course it would be George. Of course it would be George. What the heck, man? smack about you in, in your own discord link oh my goodness all right so you guys can see there nightbot did just post um that you can go check out the kickstarter link go check it out also you could join the discord look at that brian click that link right there it'll take you to the discord i got the cascadia expansion just for the additional solo achievements yes i love solo achievements I feel like this might be something where I'm hoping this is something that publishers start to do more in the future is adding these like solo achievement things in like the back of the rule book. I think it's great, um, especially for like, you know, just challenging yourself when you're playing solo and trying different things. I just I love it. So, yeah. Anyways, let's get into this play of Everstone discovering Ignis, shall we? Let's take a look at the beautiful board and all the cards, which this is unfortunate. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, we have a little bit of glare on these, but um, I will kind of show you guys what the cards are. I think that's the only thing that's glaring right now. So I think we're okay. All right. So this is Everstone. I'm just gonna call it Everstone, but it is full name Everstone discovering Ignis, and this is, I guess, Ignis. Is it discovering Ignis or is this Everstone? I think this is Ignis, because then this right here, I guess this is Ignis, and this is, or this is like downtown Ignis. I'm not quite sure, but this is like in the game. It says put your cart in Ignis, so I think this is Ignis, and the whole thing is Everstone. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sam, but thematically, this is a town that we have discovered and we are wanting to kind of make it our own and build it up. Um, so yes, uh, the audio changed. Oh my goodness. Yes, audio changed. Bingo, heck to the yes. Sounds like you're using a different mic now. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, solo achievements are great. They add more replay value. Cool. <laughs> I prefer to think of it as her announcing over an arena or <laughs> boarding a plane. Oh my goodness. Is that what I sound like right now? Oh no. Jenna, weird echo. Okay, give me one second. Back to echo audio. Please hold everyone.
Does that sound any different, everyone? Please let me know if that sounds different. It probably doesn't. I might just have to delete the... What has OBS been doing to me recently? Probably doesn't sound any different. For the influence track, you will want to make an unused player color to cover the blank spaces on each track. Way worse? Oh no. Sounds the same. Echo. Worse now. Echo is way bad now. All right, how, how about, about now? now? I, think I think I might have, have figured, figured it out, out possibly. Could, Could be wrong, wrong though. I clicked I something, something that said use out or use another audio only or something, something like that. that. Let, Let me know, know if it's better. better. Please load. Let, Let it be better. better. Please load. Please load. No, no you, you can, can say, say something. something. Echoes. Oh, why? It was fixed, then it broke at the end. What? It sounded good before you came to sit down, then it started back up again. <laughs> Apologies, friends. Is, is it, it like, like super annoying, guys? Because I don't, don't want it to be annoying and then you have to deal with it the whole time. Okay. okay, any, any better, better now? now? I'm, I'm like just going through all the different cameras because what, what I think is happening is I'm thinking that, that you guys said that there's like two things picking up 
there's my mic, mic is picking, picking up and, and then it's either my overhead camera or my webcam that is picking up something. So I went through both of those and I checked off something about it only picking up. Not annoying enough to make me same. Okay, turn off. I will still watch. Okay. Well, well, I will do, do some, some troubleshooting after, after the fact. I was hoping that what would happen is that it would just go back to normal after my last stream, but it did not. So apologies in advance for the annoying audio. If it is absolutely awful, then please let me know. Um, if I mute my mic, can you guys still hear me? It'll just be coming in from like another source, which I'm not 100% sure what source that is, <laughs> but it's coming from somewhere. You guys can hear me now? Just mute your stand mic or move it away to avoid echo. That's better? Yes, yes. Okay. It's the overhead. All right. So I'm gonna have to do some troubleshooting on my overhead camera. All right. So I just don't have to worry about having my mic in front of me, but hopefully the audio is okay. That removes the echo. Um, amazing, love that for me. All right, let's get into playing. Uh, Everstone discovering Ignis. Apologies again for the audio issues. Um, Brian and I will chat and we will figure this out because I don't know what OBS is doing to me. All right, so like I mentioned, I will be starting off with like an achievement type thing or a little solo um, scenario, I guess you could say. So basically in the game, we have the board here, we have the market, we have influence tracks, we have global achievements, and we have the reputation track. The reputation track is, oh, I think Sam said something about me having to put some influence on some places. So let me quickly check the solo rules for that. Da, 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 da. I will say that this rule book that I have here is, <laughs> love this journey, this rule book is um, an older rule book. Um, Sam, let me know what you meant by the, the influence, because I do have some of the blue markers here. Basically what you have to do in the solo is you roll the three dice and then you place the opponent's markers on those three spots. So, that is what I did. Um, the reputation track is the most important part of Everstone. Basically, you are trying to be the first player in a multiplayer game. You are trying to be the first player to hit 10 victory points or 10 reputation points. Um, if you are the person that triggers and gets 10 reputation points, every other player, so every player um, gets an equal amount of turns, every other player gets a turn, um, and then whoever has the highest on the reputation track is the winner. In a solo of, or a solo game of Everstone, this is slightly different where there is more so a countdown to the end of the game and you have to get to 10 reputation before the countdown. So this kind of solo mode kind of reminds me of the Arc Nova solo mode if you've ever played that. But basically at the end of every single one of my turns, I'm going to be pushing one of these little things over. Once I push it over, there is going to be something on some of them that are going to happen. Um, so this here is discard the rightmost card in the market. So I would discard this one right here. It would go here. Everything would push over and a new one would be put out. <clears throat> and then these would all... Uh-oh. I'm losing my voice. <laughs> Lord help me. Uh, okay, so the fourth space on the blue, fifth space on the yellow, and the sixth space on the red. Good to know. Okay. 
Let me grab some more. I'm assuming it's just covered up with uh, more of the blue. Mm -hmm. Let me actually open the updated rule book because it might say it in there too. So I do have, I can kind of show you guys. This is the solo, ooh, the solo sheet that I was talking about. So depending on what solo opponent you go against, there are four different solo opponents and each of the solo opponents actually have some sort of different thing that they're going to do at the end of each of their like full, I guess, rounds if you want to say it like that. Um, but um, let me check here. Okay, I'm just going to put them with these ones. I'd use a different color, so when you move the blue tokens, it's not confusing. Very true. Let's do that. Let's do... Let's do black. Oh! That bark spark, though. Would I also put one on here as well, Sam, or no? Is it just these ones? Two-player game, the spaces that don't have bonuses get covered to shorten each track. So the fourth space on blue, fifth space on yellow, and sixth space on red. Okay. Just flaunting box bark skills. Heck to the yes I am. Always, always flaunting the box bark skills. Okay, so like I was saying about the solo opponent here, which I actually... Why is this doing this to me? Oh my god. In the updated board, that bottom space is no longer blank. Okay. I only hear your music when volume is turned way up. Oh boy. I'm going to have to sit down with... Bring the mic back. I'm going to have to sit down with uh, OBS and figure that out. Um, sorry about that, guys. So I guess I am going to have to do this. I'm going to have the mic. I'm going to keep it like over here. So, so I'm going to have my other mic pretty, pretty far away. away. Now, now I hear you. Now, now you're, you're back. back. Okay. okay. So, so here, here you can hear me. me. If, if I, I zoom, zoom in, in, can you still hear me? Can you guys still hear me? Please let me know if you can still hear me. Thank you. Yeah, Brian, please help me fix it because I don't know what's going on with it. 
Penny, get away from the cords, woman. I was talking about my dogs and how Penny is in a very playful mood right now. And she is the reason why I'm having all these issues with my cords. So, yeah. Yes, Jenna, Brian can help. And no echo when zoomed in. Okay. Well, perfect. Love this for us. Kalkatan or IT Fun, let's fix it, fix it, fix it later. Brian, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, okay. So anyways, back to me teaching this game. I promise we'll get into the game eventually, friends. So you have all of these. Once we get down to the bottom here, the track restep or reset step will happen, which each of the solo AIs are going to be doing something different. Um, one of them is going to be slowly shutting down the market. So at the end of every single time I go through all of these, which one is going to be taken away each round. So I'm going to have six turns and then I'm going to have five turns, then I'm going to have four turns, and then I'm going to have three turns. So when this gets taken away, this is going to be placed on different things depending on the solo AI. So with one of the solo AIs, the market is slowly going to be getting shut down. So we are going to be kind of making one card less in the market. So you start with four. As these gets taken off, you flip over a market card and you put one down. Thank you, Madison. Um, with my specific solo AI that I have here, this is going to be covering up the influence track. So these here, if I get up to the top of any of these tracks, Penny and Walter. Children, absolutely not. We need to stop running around. Oh boy. Pretty sure the audio loss that happened just a moment ago was due to a sleep on your tablet or something. Just interact with chat regularly to avoid. Um, I think it was that I turned off my other mic. And I think the whole echo thing is only happening with my main screen. So the one when I am fully zoomed out. So this is the only time that you guys are hearing the echo, right? So it looks like or sounds like it's picking up my camera audio in this scene only. But then when I zoom in, it doesn't pick it up anymore. Hey, hey, friends. Uh, this game was really fun when I got to play the prototype. Ex excited to see you play it too. Carly, have you played it solo yet? I'm very interested to know if you've played it solo. Um, I'm super excited. But anyways, whenever I get to the top of these influence tracks, I get to actually place one of my things at the top here. That's going to get me a reputation point, which again, you win the game if you're able to get 10 reputation points by the end of the game. So that is kind of going to slowly each round, like I mentioned, after six turns, one of these is going to be covered up. After another five turns, another one will be covered up. So I'm probably going to be trying to cover up these pretty quickly as I go. So pretty early in the game, I might want to focus on getting up these influence tracks. Um, so that is how the solo AI works. Like I said, one will be taken off and placed here every single round. Once I have taken four off of here, so once I have taken the three turns and then take that off, the game will be over. If I have not reached that um, 10 victory points or 10 reputation points, I lose the game. Hey guys, unfortunately, no, I didn't play it solo and the rule book was very rough. Yes, I know that um, Sam has been working on the rule book. Um, he did a pretty good job with uh, teaching it in a lot of like his live streams and stuff. So I pretty much focused on those and then I read the rule book um, a few times as well. It seemed pretty decent to me when I read it. Um, so yeah, I think he's improving it, which is great. And that's exactly what we we want to happen, right? All right, so I do have, like I said, with this solo scenario, you actually um, start with some relics at the beginning of the game. If you're not doing a scenario, um, you would just be getting three random starting relics, which these are relic cards. But the scenario that I have chosen 
is actually going to be giving you three specific relics that you have to start with. So these are the three specific relics that I am starting with here. Um, I am going to have to choose one to keep, one to store, and one to discard. Um, and the one that I discard is going to be the one that allows me to get starting resources. Great to hear, I got my copy like last summer. So, oh wow. So I bet it's been improved a lot. Oh my goodness, yes. Holy, okay. So yeah, you've had yours for a while. Yeah, he's definitely done a lot of improvements from then. Um, I actually, I don't really know because I didn't see it when I guess you were seeing it, but for me, it was really easy to uh, like read the rule book and it is great now, especially he just sent me like a few days ago a like most recent updated rule book and that one has been super super easy to read so anyways we are going to be choosing one of these to keep one of these to store and one of these to discard for resources so let me go here so this is my board i'm going to have my little pawn here and i'm going to be moving to one of these spaces and doing whatever action that is. So there's four main actions. There is barter, explore, harvest, and repair. And we are going to be building up this board. So we are going to be adding relics below here that is going to add to each of those actions. So eventually I'm going to be tucking cards underneath here in order to make each of these actions stronger and for me to be able to do more during that action. So. You can put up to six below here. Um, and then also, so that is when you are keeping, but when you store something and when you first purchase it from the market, it goes into your storage. So you actually haven't um, kind of repaired the relic yet. So all of these relics are going to be damaged and you're going to have to repair them by paying the resources on the side in order to then repair them and then tuck them underneath that specific action. So wherever you decide to store them, that's going to be the action that you, when you do repair it, which the repair action is here, you get to kind of store it, not store it, keep it underneath uh, that specific action. So if I decided to store it over here, I would then repair it and place it underneath here. Pretty easy concept. All right. I just knocked down. Oh, no, 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 no. Do not do that. All right. So that is how this works. So I am deciding which one I want to tuck, which one I want to store for later, and then which one I want to discard for the uh, things, for the resources, which I will say you do get additional stars if you decide to keep, store, and discard specific ones. So let me quickly check. Do, do, do. Here we go. So with the specific one that I'm doing, my starting relics is the Mystical Chalice, the Rod of Abundance, and the Charging Cauldron. So I will get a star if I complete it. If I keep number eight, which is the Rod of Abundance, if I keep number eight and I store number six, which is the Mystical Chalice. Oh. And then I would have to discard the Charging Cauldron. I would be able to gain two more stars. So that's interesting. What do I want to do? Let me... Carly, how are the kiddos? George is asking how the kiddos are. Hello, Sky. Welcome to the stream. How's it going? How are you? Do I want to do that? Do I want to try to get three stars by keeping, 
keeping the rod of abundance. So this one would be tucked. Honestly, I kind of want to try to do it. I think that'd be fun. The mystical chalice would be stored and then this one would get discarded. Sure, let's do that. So the rod of abundance. So these are how the cards look. If it would, hello. There we go. So this is how the card looks. The bottom is going to be the ability when it is kept and tucked. You have whatever resources here. You have a reward. This is if you decide to sell it, um, you get the reward. And then over here, this is if you decide to discard it, uh, you get to do that. So selling and discarding is different. Um, you get the reward if you sell it. Um, but you get the discard bonus if you discard it. So very different things. Um, but yes, I'm going to decide to do that. I think I will put this here. So Rod of Abundance. No, this one is going to be getting tough. I'm going to put this one here. So that's the one I'm keeping. The mystical chalice I'm going to place here. And then I am discarding the charging cauldron for one blue, three yellows, and one red. <laughs> George. <laughs> All right. And then um, I do get to place my influence. So these are going to be influence tokens. You guys can see that I have some piles over here of influence tokens. You are going to be placing your influence out um, in various ways. And that's actually going to, once you get some of the influence out, that's going to expand your storage. So... Um, I am going to place this somewhere and gain the um, bonus there. So I'm going to place it here and I'm going to gain an additional red. Okay. Okay. So that is going to be my starting relics and everything there. So I think we're ready to start the game. Who's ready? Who is ready to rumble? So actually, we're going to stay on here for now because I'm going to be deciding what action I want to do. I am going to be starting on barter. So I can't do barter for my first thing. Oh, I also do have some quests. Quests. OK, so I have a starting quest which is have at least one relic below each action or have four relics below any action. Okay, so I'm gonna have to work on getting one on each of them or four on one of them. And then this one here is sell a brown relic or a purple relic for its time bonus. Okay, so we got a purple relic here that's going to allow me to Discard a yellow resource, this one right here. Discard a yellow resource in order to get a caravan upgrade, which is kind of good. Um, we have no browns out right now, but okay. I think I'm ready to go. I think I'm ready to do this thing. I probably shouldn't do harvest right now. I think I am going to... Um, I think I might explore. What things do we do here?
Ooh, I could do that. This one here is get another, okay. I think I'm going to explore. Yeah, so I'm gonna go to explore. Explore is going to be that I can take my caravan, which I will show you guys the board. I'm gonna take my caravan. I'm gonna go to one of these five locations here. So there's going to be one that is on the board. This is that I can choose up to two of these. You're just going to be spending to get additional relics or you're going to be getting another quest. Um, so that is that space. And then these ones are going to be ever-changing locations. So this one here is that I'm going to get a basic relic, which is this guy here. This is going to allow me to add more storage which would be really nice because um, my storage is all already pretty full. So I might go here. There's also this one that'll allow me to spend one yellow resource in order to get another goal. This one here, I would discard three cards, discard three relics in order to get a reputation. Um, I believe that's what that one is. And then this one here is go down three spaces on one of the influence tracks in order to get a reputation. So I would obviously have to be up pretty far for that one. So that one's probably not going to be going there. So I'm not, or that one's not going to be getting moved um, or used for a while. So I don't really know why I, I picked that one for my influence. Because um, basically if you have an influence, you, whenever someone goes there or you go there, um, you are going to be able to gain the thing there. So probably not the best option for me. You know what? I'm actually going to change my decision. Now looking at that, I'm going to go here. I'm not going to gain a red. I'm going to gain a blue. Because this one will most likely be used more, which I will add. I am going to go here to this location. That's going to allow me to pick up one of these, like so. And I'm going to be placing these um, in one of these spots. So I'm going to be storing this on one of my storage spots. So I think I'm going to place it here like that. I can still use this here. Um, and then eventually I'm going to be able to spend three yellow to flip this over. And then that's going to allow me to tuck it underneath something. Um, I don't think I can use it when it's stored. I'm not 100% sure. Hi all, how much have I missed? Not much, I am literally performing my first action right now. I do remember something about you not being able to use it when you're storing it. I could be wrong. Let me quickly check. Um, Add the reserve extension face up to an open workspace. Okay, no, you can use it. Wonderful. You can. Perfect. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'm like, why would you want to flip it over then? Basically, you're going to, there's five spots right now that you can use for extra storage, but you can decide to spend three of your yellow resources to flip it over you would then only have three spaces, but I guess it's because you can take it off of that spot and use it for another relic. So yes, I'm using it for storage right now, but it's taking up a spot that I could be putting another relic on, like a larger one. Reserve ex uh, extensions are the only items that are usable while they are in your workshop. Very cool. Very, very cool. So that's gonna go there. Love that for me. Um, and like I was saying, this location is actually going to be taken off the board. So once a location has been used, 
it actually gets taken off the board, which let me get back to the board. So the location that I just used gets taken off of the board. This is like a merchant that you have gone to, you have purchased something from him. So he's like, okay, I'm moving along to the next town, I guess. Um, I'll be back later, but I'm leaving for now. Um, then you have these two here that are in queue. The next one in queue actually takes the spot of that one. This one gets moved up and then this one gets put into the queue. So that's kind of how the locations work. So they're always going to be getting like uh, circulated, I guess. So we got that. I put it here. Good, good. And then I can decide to take one of my influence and place it somewhere. So basically you're going to be doing the main action. Let me move you back over to here. So I'm going to be doing the main action, which I just did. We used a location. Then you're going to move down to the next thing, which is this here, which is I can spend one yellow resource in order to place one of my influence out um, on the board here. So, and it has to be in the location that my buggy is in. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to spend a yellow resource. I'm going to take one of these and they do have to be taken in a specific um, direction. So I'm going to have to do those and I'm going to have to do those. Okay. So then this gets placed onto that one right there like that. Whoop, whoop. So I put it onto the location that I was at and I don't think I get the resource when I first place it. Um, I will get it after whenever I go to that location. All right. So I believe that is my first turn finished. I've done this and then I have no relics below. So that is going to be the end of my first turn. We're going to push over this next one to here and I'm gonna move into my next turn. All right. So I think I can't purchase this one yet. I think I'm going to I'm going to harvest. So we're gonna to go to the harvest action. This is roll all three dice, and then I will explain how exactly this works. So you have these three dice here. We're gonna roll them on the board. We got a six, a five, and a five. So there's a few things that can happen here, all right? First thing is if I can get this here. So if you are able to, this is a relic that you are able to get for free if you are able to match these dice numbers here. So you also have this ability here, which this is going to allow me to flip over to the reverse side of one of these dice. And then I can additionally use these in order to do those things in order to try to make the three dice that I rolled into a three, a three, and an even. So if I was able to, I don't think it's gonna happen um, unless I use a lot of resources, but I could use the six as the even, and then somehow I could make both of these fives into threes. I could actually, if I wanted to, you can spend a blue resource in order to put the pip down one. So I could spend two blue resources in order to um, make them a four and a four. I could use this free action here to make this four into a three by flipping it to the opposite side. And then I could use a red resource in order to make this four into a three. And I would successfully get this. Um, basically, I would just get this for free. I wouldn't have to purchase it from the market and then it would immediately, I believe, get tucked under and kept for you. Um, but I'm not gonna do that. That's a lot of resources to spend. So I'm gonna put them back to the fives that I had. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add together two of them. 
that's going to be what track I'm going to go up. Um, so if I add five and five together, that's going to be 10. So I would go up on the red track. I would move up on the red track to the first spot here. If ever there is a spot with an opponent, you're actually going to jump over that opponent. So for example, if this one was actually here, when I moved up the red track, I would actually just go to this spot here. I wouldn't go to the same spot as the opponent. I would simply just leapfrog over them, but that is not the case. So I am going to do this. So I'm gonna do five and five in order to move up on the red track. I'm going to gain one yellow resource. And then the other die is going to represent how many of that colored resource. So whatever track you went up, that's going to be how many resources of that color you get. So I actually got six red resources, which is crazy. Um, I was actually pretty close to already getting a um, achievement. So I don't know if you guys remember me showing you them, but there are achievements up here. They're one-time achievements. So whenever you get one of them, you're actually going to be taking one of your influence markers and then placing them on one of those achievements and then gaining that reputation point. So one of them is gaining 10 or more resources in one turn. So there, is it possible for me to actually do that? No. So I got seven because I gained six red resources and then I gained one yellow. One, two, three, four, five, six red resources. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So I literally don't have any more <laughs> storage. Actually, I do have one here. But then I'm probably going to do this. So I have, I think this turn I would have gotten eight resources. So I was pretty close to gaining the, this uh, one time bonus here of gaining 10 or more resources in one turn. This one here is end your turn with 20 or more resources in your caravan. Um, remove all of your influence tokens from your reserve. This is have six relics under the uh, repair action, have six relics under the explore action, six relics under the barter action, and this is have a reserve extension or brown relic under each main action. Oh, cool. And then this one here is have three caravan upgrades above your workshop, which I'll get to those. Um, hi, Jenna. Thanks for introducing solo gaming to me. Oh my goodness. Um, as an introvert, as an introvert, uh, this is like my gateway drug to recharge myself before I interact with society. Oh my goodness. Uh, Tina Pay Kid Burger, you are very welcome. Um, I don't know if that's exactly how you say your username, but you are so welcome. That makes me incredibly, incredibly happy. Um, and I appreciate you commenting that. It really makes me happy. Hello, hope I'm not late. Literally trash, <laughs> you're not too late. I am just in my second turn of the game. We're doing pretty good so far. Um, how are you? Hello, Juan, hello, how's it going? All right, everybody. I think that's everything for my turn. I'm gonna go down, this is the only um, kind of ability here. Let me move you guys over here. This is the only ability that you don't perform like after the main action. This is the only one that you have access to when you're performing the main action. This is what I said um, when you can use your resources in order to manipulate the dice. Um, so then we move down to this one here. I am going to take one of my influence markers. I'm going to place it here and I'm going to gain one resource of my choice and I am going to gain a blue. I'm gonna gain a blue resource. Boom, okay. So that's everything for my first, or my second turn. So we're going to move over to the solo board here. We're gonna push over Nim's next action. 
and they are going to discard the rightmost card in the market. So we're going to discard this one here. Oh, uh-oh, you guys are gonna have to deal with my echo for a second. Just, Just so, so that we can, we can look, look at these. these. So, so I'm, I'm aware, aware that, that I'm echoing, echoing right, right now. now. It's, it's fine. fine, it's, it's fine, fine everyone. everyone. We're going to discard this card. We're going to move them all over, which is great. And then flip over the next card. And that'll be the market. Okay. So that's what happened with Nim's turn. We are now going to go on to my next turn, which I am going to... Ooh, what do I want to do here? What's Nim going to do? Okay. Okay. I think Hmm. <laughs> Goddess Jenna speaks. <laughs> Did it sound like that? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to actually I'm going to do a little repair. So I'm going to do repair. So I'm going to pay the repair cost of the relics. So you can decide to repair. Ooh, maybe I want to do that, actually. I think I'm going to do that. I'm not going to repair yet, because if you have the resources to do so, you can actually repair um, multiple things on a turn. So... What I think I'm going to do, one, two, three, I only have three blues. So my only issue is, oh no, I should be able to do it. Okay, so I'm gonna move to barter. So what happens with barter is I'm going to move my cart back to Ignis. This is Ignis here. Let me move you guys to the board. I'm going to move my cart to Ignis. I'm going to buy a relic and then gain uh, a reward. So you guys can see here, this is kind of the, the thing that you get to do when you do the barter action. So I'm going to buy a relic from the market. I'm going to spend one resource of my choice. I'm just going to spend a red. I'm going to buy this one here. And then I'm going to place it into this spot here. So I'm going to place it into my caravan. I could place it here, but that would actually cover up what I want to do next. So I move to Ignis. I buy a relic, which I just did. This is going to move over and a new one's going to flip out. Got a lot of blues. Holy. And then I gain the reward. So I can gain this reward or this reward. I am going to... I'm going to do this one, which technically I'm going to be able to do both of them regardless. Um, so I'm going to do this one first, which I'm going to spend a red to then go up the red track. Oopsie. Let me zoom you guys over to here. So this action here, you're going to discard any resource to go up that coordinating track. So I'm, I discarded a red to go up the red track. That's going to allow me to place an influence token at the location that I'm at. So I'm going to place this influence token onto one of these three spaces. I'm going to put it onto this blue space. That's going to get me a blue resource. I'm gonna place it over here. I do have two more spots for resources, so we're good. Um, okay, and then moving down from that action, so I did this, I moved to Ignis, I bought a relic, and I gained a reward, so I gained this one. And then because this is still open and not covered up, it says gain the other Ignis reward. So I'm gonna look at here, 
and I'm going to be able to gain one resource or discard a card. So I'm actually going to gain a resource and I will gain a, I'll gain a yellow resource. I think that's fine. Yeah, I'm gonna gain a yellow resource like so. All right, so I believe that's going to be everything for my turn. Did everything that I needed to there. So we are going to move to Nim's turn, which Nim is going to push this over. And then Nim is going to roll a die and move Caravan Token. So I believe, yeah. So each of the places um, are marked with a number. So we're just going to roll this die. Oopsie. So three. So Nim is going to move to number three. So their caravan's the, the teal one. And number three is, is it this one? Heck yeah, it is. And because I'm here, I gain a yellow resource. Woohoo! Thanks, Nim. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. So that's that. We're going to move back to my turn. I am going to now, like I said, I'm going to be able to go here. I'm going to go to repair and I can afford to repair both of these. So I think what I'm going to do, I am going to keep this one. So when you repair, you're either deciding to pay the resources on the side to either sell it or to keep it. So I'm going to keep the mystical chalice. So I'm gonna pay two blue, one, two, and two red. And then I get to place a influence. So I'm gonna place it Ooh. Oh, do you know what I can do? Oh, this is sick. So whenever you place influence, you do have to place it on the spot that you're uh, at. So I think I actually just got my first reputation point. So um, this is happening because I am purchasing this or uh, repairing. So it allows me to place an influence here. That's going to allow me to go up one space on the blue track. That is also going to get me to be able to place an influence. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna place it here. And this is actually that I get to get a reputation. So I'm gonna move up one on the reputation track. Woohoo! Third turn and I got one reputation. Oh, this is sick. Honestly, like, I'm enjoying this so far. All right, so. I'm deciding to uh, repair this one and that's going to allow me to either sell it or keep it. I'm deciding to keep it and that actually tucks it underneath my board. So I tucked that underneath this board and then I'm actually going to decide to uh, sell this one. So I still do have to pay what's on here. So I'm gonna pay two blues, one yellow and one of my choice. So I think I'll do a red. And then again, I get to put out an influence. So I'm going to place it here. No, I'm going to put it on the red to gain a red resource. I'm actually going to take things off of here. There we go. Spending these. And then instead of keeping this one, and putting it under here, which I could do if I wanted. But if you guys remember, I do have a personal quest to either sell a brown relic or a purple relic for its time bonus. So we have here that I can sell it for its reward here. So I'm pretty sure that's what it means. I'm not 100% sure what the time bonus means but I'm assuming that is this reward here because that's what it's pointing to here. It has like a little arrow coming off of that. 
So this is going to be that I'm going to sell it. I'm going to be able to spend one yellow and I gain my first caravan upgrade. I'm pumped. So I'm going to sell that. I also finish this guy here, which just gets flipped over. And you guys can see that there's a little spot here. I take again another one of my influence and I place it onto there and I gain another reputation. Woohoo! We're a fifth of the way there. Good morning from Northern BC. Good morning, Kerf, Cut, Games, and Ideas. Welcome to the stream. How are you on this fine Sunday? All right. So that's that. I believe I did that right. If I didn't, I'm sure Sam would chime in and tell me I'm doing something wrong. But I'm pretty sure that was correct. Um, I think that's everything. Oh, I need my caravan upgrade. So a caravan upgrade. Let me show you guys. These are the caravan upgrades here. What's going to happen is it's going to give me two different options for things that I can tuck above my board. So these are going to be actions that I can perform before my main action. So whenever you do an action, you're always going to start from the top and go down. So one side of a caravan is going to have to uh, be tucked under a specific location. So this one actually has to be tucked underneath the barter. And for the barter action, I would be able to spend one resource of any type to repair a relic from the market. So I would actually be able to repair it straight from the market instead of having it uh, come to my storage and then having to repair there. So that's actually pretty good. Or I can use the other side. It can be placed anywhere that you want it to. There's some sort of very high pitched beeping. Um, I can place this in any spot that I want. And this would allow me to gain one resource, a card from the market, I believe, and discard a card. But I think I'm going to do this one. So I'm going to place this above my barter action. And that's going to allow me to pay one of any resource in order to repair a relic from the market. So I would obviously still have to pay whatever the cost is on that relic but I would be able to pay for it and then it'd go straight to either being kept or sold for the bonus. So that's pretty cool. All right. Um, is there a reason why I have a random yellow one here? Yes, that was for this action. Okay, so that's everything for my turn, but I can right here this is that I could spend one blue resource, which I do not have, in order to relocate a relic. So that's either that I could move this one to another spot, or I could actually move a kept one to another spot or reorder them below. So those are some different options for when you can relocate, but obviously I do not have a um, blue, so I'm not going to do that. And then here, I can exchange this is pretty good. I can exchange one of any color for three of any color. So I think I'm going to spend one red to gain two blue. Actually, no, I'll just get three blues. How about that? Three blues. There we go. So I have a good array of different different resources there. I'm not sure what I'm doing next, but we will see. Okay, so that's everything for my fourth turn. My fourth turn, everyone. I am well, thanks. I'm so glad. I am so glad. Okay, let's go over to Nim. Nim is over here. We're going to move over their next piece, and they are going to discard the rightmost card in the market. So they're going to do that again. So they're going to take this one here. They're going to discard that one and then push over 
the rest of these and a new one is going to come out cool 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 all right so that is everything for nim i'm going to go back to my board here and let's decide what i want to do next <clears throat> Um, I'm kind of tempted to go back to barter or I could explore. I will say because Nim has moved to this spot here, I cannot go to this location until Nim has moved off of there. Because whenever someone is at a location, only one person can be at a location at a time. So you have to actually uh, wait until a person um, leaves in order for you to go to that location. So I could actually, I could explore. I could go to this location here. That would allow me to spend one yellow in order to get another um quest i feel like i'm pretty close to getting my second quest which is that i have to have one relic below each action i already have one below two of them so i could get another quest i could also barter again that would allow me to spend any resource in order to uh repair one from the whatever it's called the market which would be pretty good <clears throat> that would allow me to at least get one into one of the third spots um hmm what do i want to do i think i might do that that would allow me to go up on one of these tracks again, which would be nice because, like I said, in two turns, Nim is going to be covering one of these spots. So I think that's probably my best option right now is to do that. So I'm going to go to barter. Okay, we're going to barter. We're going to go from repair to barter. I'm going to spend one resource of any color in order to repair one of these cards. Like I said, I still do have to pay for it. So I have to make sure that I can pay for it. Ooh. Um. Okay. I'm trying to figure out like what card I want. <clears throat> Ooh. Okay. I think I'm actually going to get the one that I think you guys can see right now. So this one here. This is going to either allow me to sell it, which the reward for selling is that if you are the highest on one of the influence tracks, repair a relic from the market for free, or I could keep it, which I think I'm going to do, and I can spend five red resources in order to place one of my influences on here, and that's going to get me another reputation point, which I think is pretty good. Um, I will say that... I probably need to get more that are going to like exchange and get me resources, which I don't think I've seen any green cards yet. The green relic cards are the ones that just get you resources. So it's unfortunate that I haven't seen any yet, um, but I think I am going to get this one. Um, so that means that I am going to have to spend one of any resource. So let me do a yellow. I'm going to spend a yellow. And then to purchase this one, I have to spend a blue, a red, and then any other color. So I'm going to spend a blue. And this one is going to go into my storage. 
Um, where do I want this one to go? I, I'm kind of tempted to just put it here. I think I'll put it there. Because I don't really want to cover up this, this action here, which is pretty good. That you can uh, spend one yellow to place an influence. Um, speaking of placing influence, I do get to place an influence for purchasing this card. So it has to be in the location that I'm in. So I'm going to place it here. Let me move you guys to the board. I placed my influence on this one here. You always have to start with the lowest one and then move up. So I could place it here or I could place it here. So I'm going to place it here. That's going to allow me to go up once on the red track. Like I said, I'm not going to go onto the space with the uh, AI. I'm going to jump over them. So I'm going to go and get one resource of any color, and I'm going to gain a red. Because like I said, we now have that one relic that I'm going to have to spend five, five red to place down there. So there we go. I believe that is everything. Nope, that is definitely not everything. <laughs> I still have to take the barter action. Oh my goodness, okay. So, I have only done this so far. That's crazy, okay. So, now I'm taking this action, which as I move to Ignis, I can buy another relic if I can afford it. Which I feel like I could afford some of these. Um, oh, you know what? I didn't want to do this. Because we're trying to get one into all four, right? That's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Um, I'm kind of tempted to do this one. It's another blue one but it's that I can spend three blue to gain a self reward, gain a self reward from a relic in the market and then discard the relic. I think that's pretty good. So I think I'm gonna do this one. I'm gonna have to spend one of any resource. So I'm going to spend a blue and I will replace this one Like that. All right, all right. Um, I believe these get pushed down and then this gets flipped. Still no green relics. This is unfortunate. Oh, maybe it is. Oh yeah, because it's repair it for free. You're right, Sam. Thank you so much. I completely forgot that. So I'm literally, yeah, that's the point of that, that caravan upgrade is that I can literally repair it straight from the market. Thank you so much, Sam. I would have screwed myself over. So this one actually doesn't go to the storage. It actually goes straight to being kept underneath. So that's going to go there like that. Um, the one that I did purchase from the market does have to go into store. Hello, Leah. Welcome to the stream. How are you? All right. So... That was the market action. I get to perform one of these, which I will be able to do both of them uh, because this is uncovered. So I can spend one resource to go up a track and then I can gain a resource or discard a card. Um... So I can either go up the red track or I can go up the yellow track. The yellow track I haven't even started going up yet, um, but still I want, I want to keep the reds, right? But it's fine. I'm going to discard a red and I'm going to go up the red track because I'm getting pretty close to the top and that's going to get me a reputation point. So that's going to get me a blue resource. All right, and because this action here is not covered up, I also get to do the other one, which is I can gain a resource 
or I can discard a card and I'm going to gain a resource and I'm just going to gain a red. Boom. All right. That is everything for my turn. Let's go to Nim. Move this over. This is advance up each of the influence tracks once. So boom, boom, and boom. All right. So this is my last turn before Nim is going to take one of the influence spots, which I think it's just inevitable that that's going to happen, but I'm okay with it. Um, what game did you play today? Honey Buzz. Uh, got it for the first time last week and loved it solo. So played two player. Nice. Got Next Station London and played first time two player. It was great. I really enjoyed Next Station London. Um, that one I've played a few times on BGA. I haven't played it in person yet, but seems like fun. All right. So moving on to my next turn. What do you guys think I should do? I'm thinking I should probably gain some resources. I think that'll be a pretty good idea. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go to the harvest action. The harvest action, you're going to be rolling these dice. We got a one, a five, and a two. Ooh. Okay, I might be able to get a tool. Match discovery combination. So this is the discovery combination here, which is a two, which we have a one, which I could flip it over to a six because we have this icon here. And then I would just need to spend one blue resource in order to make this five into a four. Should I do that? I think I might do it. I do believe that I just get to automatically like gain this. It doesn't go into my storage. I believe it goes straight into being kept or sold. Let me quickly check. Instead, draw and look at the top card of the relic deck. You now may choose between the following options unless the card states otherwise. Sell the relic or keep the relic. Yes. All right. I think I might do that. So I'm going to use this icon here to flip this one to a six. And then I am going to spend one blue resource because of this here. Because this is not covered up, I'm going to use one blue resource and I'm going to put this pip down from a five to a four. So we now have a four, a six, and a two. And I get this resource automatically, or this relic, sorry. <clears throat> Ooh, okay. <clears throat> I think I will actually sell this. I think in this situation, this means that it has repaired itself. Is that what that means, Sam? Please let me know. Basically, the uh, sell reward on this one is if repaired by itself, advance up to four spaces on an influence track. Oh, uh, it says if discovered, keep this relic. Dang it. So this was a situation where it was discovered. So I think... I think that means that I have to keep it. Sam, if you're still here, let me know. 
but I think this means that I have to keep it. Because it says, if discovered, keep this relic. Ah, uh, I couldn't understand Next Station London on BGA, so decided to wing it and get the game today. And so glad I did. That's, that's awesome. So I can catch up when it's finished. Uh, what? Sadly, yes, you must keep it. No. <laughs> If repaired by itself, so when it when when it says if repaired by itself, that means that like you are taking the repair action and repairing it. Just that card alone, I think that's what that means. And then because I discovered it this way, I do have to keep it. All right, but that's okay. That's going to allow me to place it underneath here. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to place it here, and at any time I can discard a card to purchase from the market and get, bingo, okay, um, and get a resource of my choice. All right. At least this gets me one step closer to getting this one uh, quest that I got. Uh, sadly, I got to go on the bus and need to charge... Or need to change buses. All good, Leah. Thank you so much for popping in. I appreciate it. Have a good rest of your day. All right. So that was my harvest action. I can now place one of my influences here in order to gain one resource. <clears throat> oh, that would have been so nice to be able to go up four on a track. One, two, three, four. I would have been here for the yellow track. Dang. One, two, three, four. I would have been there. And then I could have easily just gotten to the top of that one. Dang, man. That would have that would have been great. Okay, so I can gain a resource of my choice. I'm gonna gain a red. Alright. Alright, alright. And then. That is everything for my turn. So sadly, in this situation now, it is now Nim's turn. This is going to get pushed over. That means that I am going to have to perform the track restep. So I'm going to take the highest one here, and that's going to cover up the lowest numbered influence. So I cannot gain that one. <clears throat> Which I think is fine because the most that I can gain from this track anyways is three. So, it's okay. And then, these are all going to get pushed over again. And now I get five turns before the next one. Uh, hi from the UK, Jenna. Oh my goodness. Hello, Terry. Welcome to the stream. How are you? How is it going? All right, so it is now back to me. Let's go back to my board. All right, so I think I am going to if I explore yeah, I think I might explore. That will allow me to get a new quest, since I'm pretty much finished with my second quest. So I'm going to go to explore. I'm going to move to a location. So I'm going to go from Ignis, and I'm going to move to this location here. Uh, I am, because I have an influence here, I'm going to gain a blue resource. And I'm going to spend a yellow resource... And I'm going to gain a new personal quest. So, this is my new personal quest, which is... Uh, <laughs> this, this is pretty... <laughs> this is not good. Have a group of three green upgrades below any action. Oh no. We have not seen a single green yet so far. So... 
Good luck to me in getting that quest completed. Might be able to do it. <laughs> so unfortunately, I do have this card covering up the extra action there. So it's not great. Um, because I used this action here, I am going to take this one off. There's going to be a new one placed. This one's going to move up. And then this one goes here. All right. So that is everything for my turn. It just got me a personal goal, which or personal quest, so that's okay. Didn't get me much that turn, but it's fine. Everything's fine. Actually, let me go back to Nim. Nim is going to move over. They're going to discard the rightmost card in the market. So they're going to discard this one. Please, Lord, let this be a green one. Green. Oh, my gosh. Did I not, like, shuffle these at all? I don't want to look at them, but, like... <gasps> Ooh, yes, yes, yes. The basic relics act as green relics. So we have these guys up here. Those act as green relics, so I could get some of those. Could get some of those. Um, now I need to figure out how to get those. Um, I guess I could go here. You can spend two. Oh, you guys can't see that. This location here, you can spend two red to get those. Also, the next spot here on the red track is also a green relic. Good to know. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So it's now back to my turn. I think... I think... Do I want to... It's either I repair... I cannot repair anymore. This relic here needs two yellow and a red. I only have one yellow. So I think I'm going to harvest and I am not going to get this card. I am just getting my resources and moving up a track. So I have a six, a five, and a, oopsie, a one. Six, a five, and a one. Um, okay. Well, that's unfortunate. The one is a little bit unfortunate in this situation. So, what I could do is I could add together the five and the one to get a six. And then I would gain six yellow resources. That might be nice to gain six yellow resources. And then I get to move up the yellow track once, which is not going to get me anything. I think that's really the only option. Or I could add these two together. I could go up one on the red track and get one red resource. Honestly, because then that would get me this. And it would also get me very close to being at the top of the influence track. But it's only going to get me one red resource. That's the worst. Yay, I'm back for now. Got a bit of time. Yay! So glad that you're hanging, hanging out, Leah. All good. Thanks. How's you? I am wonderful. I am very much so enjoying this, uh, this game of Everstone. Um, okay. So I think I'm going to do this. I think this is the best option. And I do think that this one, let me check quickly. I think this automatically gets placed, right? When gain, you have two yellow resources. You may choose to spend them to find the relic. You will not have the opportunity again. You can see what, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoot. I need a yellow resource. How am I supposed to get a yellow resource? 
Maybe I wait then. Because basically what happens... Yeah. So basically what happens with these... If I move up on the red track right now, I'm going to be able to gain this. This automatically gets tucked underneath, but I can choose to spend two yellow resources to flip it before I tuck it. And that's actually going to allow me to upgrade it so that every time I get this, I get two resources of my choice. So what I'm going to do now is I think I'm gonna hold off on doing that. This might be crazy. Is this crazy? Am I stupid for doing this? I don't think I'm stupid for doing this, right? I don't know. Oh, dang. <laughs> That's crazy. So I like completely didn't even, I like ignored this because I'm like, I don't want to get this card. I don't want to get this card because, oh, but maybe I should. Should I just get the top card, guys? I think that's honestly, like, it's crazy because I literally got the exact combination. A six, a five, and a one. What? What? That's crazy. I like totally just dismissed it because I'm like, I don't want to do that again. I need resources. But guys, I could just get this card right away. And it could be a green. It could be a green. Do we risk it? Do we risk it for the free biscuit? Because this just automatically can just either be sold or kept. What complexity is this game? It's not insanely complex i think it's like a two point something so it's definitely in like that mid i mean it's kind of calling your name honestly like yeah oh i guess i could do that with the free tool i guess you can yeah instead of taking the card you can just use this and I could flip this to a six, so then I could still use the red track. I could go up the red track. I still wouldn't be able to do this, which is I can spend two yellow in order to flip it over. I'm kind of tempted to get the free tool. Not going to lie. Risk it for the free biscuit. I'm thinking that too. Let me quickly check what the weight is of Everstone. I think it's like a two point something something. Or there might not even be a weight up yet because, oh no. So it's a 2.82, Leah. 2.82. You just mentioned that you played Honey Buzz. I don't think Honey Buzz is any more than that. Honey Buzz. So Everstone is a 2.82 and Honey Buzz is a 2.73. So this is like slightly more complex, but I wouldn't say it's like any more difficult than Honey Buzz. So I definitely think that you would be able to handle it. Wow, I thought I joined this channel, but I have not. Um, I've not leaf. <laughs> that is weird. All right. Just because this was like so perfect and I rolled the perfect number, I think this is meant to be. And I'm going to be so happy if this is a green. Green! Damn it! It's not a green! Why are you not a green? Oh, dang, but this is pretty good. Oh. After this turn, take another one. Okay. Interesting. So I think I'm going to keep this one. This is a pretty cool card. Um, if you guys can see it, if it would. There we go. So this is the card here. I can either spend three red, which I don't really want to do. I'm going to have to put it here. 
I can spend three to take another turn right away, which would just kind of hold off Nim taking their turn. Um, but, or I can keep it, place it under, and uh, be able to fulfill my one thing. Yeah. And of course, those ratings are subjective as they are collected by BGG users like you and me. Yeah. So it's not like a, a for sure thing. It's just kind of more opinions than anything. All right. So I think I'm going to keep this one. I'm going to put this here because this is going to allow me to place an influence out. And I'm, it's going to allow me to do this action again, which is very cool. So that's going to go there. That actually allows me to fulfill this quest, have at least one relic below each action or have four relics below any uh, one action. So this is now completed. Get to place this here and I go up again on the influence. So I'm getting there. I'm at three, sorry, reputation. I'm at three reputation. Am I the only one that will downrate a game complexity to try and bring the number down, even if it means rating it light and it's not? <laughs> Do you think that people often rate things more complex than they actually are, Stacy? I feel like complexity is an interesting conversation because people kind of think complexity as different things. Um, some people think that a higher complexity means that it's like the rules are more challenging or like it's harder to learn but then some people think that complexity is just in the like decision space like how many decisions you're going to be making and how hard it is on your like brain to make decisions wait so higher the rate it's harder yes so basically, Leah, on BGG, there is a uh, weight system or like a complexity system that is zero to five. The higher that it is or the closer to five it is, the more difficult it is or the more complex it is. Um, like I said, people think of this in very different ways, so it's kind of hard. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting that they, they make it the people that are playing it rate it you'd think that it'd be like the designers that like set the complexity rating but maybe not who knows <clears throat> anyways moving on um so i'm not anywhere close to any of those actually i'm pretty close to getting all of my influence out so that's good all right so, <clears throat> I don't know if I did this. I don't think I did. Did I already do this, guys? Did I place out my influence? <clears throat> Sorry, my, my voice is leaving me. Yeah, I wish it was the de designer and not the people. When your grandmother thinks Ticket to Ride is a 5.0 complexity, I would rate it a 1.0. Yeah. It's so subjective because the more games you play, the easier it gets. Exactly. That makes sense. <clears throat> okay. Why is my voice being so stupid? Okay. Probably not great that I'm literally drinking coffee to try to make my throat not do this. Defo check out Everstone. Yeah, definitely check it out, uh, Leah. See if it's something that you would like. Obviously, you're watching this, and that's going to be a good kind of indication if you like it or not. Um, but every once in a while, um, Nightbot does post the link to the Kickstarter. But if you want the link, all you have to do is just uh, put exclamation point sponsor in the chat and nightbot will give you a link to the kickstarter campaign for everstone if you want to check it out um okay so i'm still not 100 percent sure if i did this or not 
Imagine trusting Lacerda to rate the complexity of his own games. Not sure that would work so well. Hey, 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 I think, I think Lacerda knows how difficult his games are. I think he would be able to pretty accurately rate his games. But I guess, like, it, again, it depends because the designer then knows a lot about games. And being a designer, you obviously have played a lot of games and you know the ins and outs of the game, so then maybe games to you are less complex, so then it just happens all over again. There should be some sort of system to try to accurately rate something. You still have to place an influence? Okay. Thank you so much. Hey there, Mickey. Appreciate it. Okay. So I'm going to place one here. And I will gain, should I gain a red or should I gain a yellow? I'll gain a red. Get me closer to being able to do this card here. All right. So that's everything for me. We're going to go back to Nim. Sorry, there we go. Um, put in exclamation point sponsor, Leah. Actually, I could probably put it in as well. Or if anybody else wants to put it in to help Leah out. I think I should be able to do it. There we go. Look at me go. Anyways, uh, any way you look at it, it's subjective, just like anything in life. Yep, very true. Again, that's why I feel like there needs to be some sort of like mathematical some sort of mathematical equation or something that can like I don't know depending on the mechanics and the gameplay it can like calculate the complexity or something I don't know could work who knows anyways okay so it's Nim's turn they are actually finally moving off of the spot that I want to go to that has the, the green relic. So we are going to roll a die. And that's going to be where they move to. So they're going to move to number one. Okay. So they're here. They're going to move off the spot that I want to go to. And they're going to go to number one, which is here. Which is fine because I don't think I'm going to be going there anytime soon. All right, so that's that. I will then go back to my board and it's now my turn. So should we just full on go explore? I think that is probably our best bet. So I'm gonna explore. I'm gonna move myself right to here because I have an influence here. I gain a yellow, whoop whoop. I'm going to do this, which is Oh, this works out perfectly. Oh, I love this. I love this for me. This is great. <laughs> I've got the link now. Thanks, lovely gardeners. You're welcome, Leah. All right. So, because I now have two yellows, I'm going to spend those two yellows. And I'm going to flip this over, baby. And I think I'm going to place it below the explore action. Because that's going to allow me, ooh, could do that. Okay, so all right, so did this. This is now going to go off of the board. This new one is going to come up here. This is going to be pushed up. Oopsie. You guys probably want to see what I'm doing here. This one's going to go here. All right. So that is what I did on the board. Good, good, good. Let's go back over to here. I cannot perform this here. Um, but I do go down to here. I am actually going to place an influence here. 
And it looks like, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I think what happens is I do gain a uh, reputation when this gets uncovered. Uh, just need a rate rules complexity and decision space separately and use an average to determine overall complexity. Need defined terms to help with the decision and rating. Uh, it still would vary person to person. I played heat with some beginners the other day and asked how they would rate the complexity so I could help recommend other games to them. One said five, the other said seven out of ten. Okay. Uh, having a big, uh, sample size helps balance subjectivity. Yep. Has anyone played Trash Pandas? Um, I have not. I don't think. I've played Trash Talk. I came across it and want to play it, but don't know if you can do solo. I don't think you can play it solo. If you ever want to see if a game has solo mode... Um, if you just search the game and then solo mode, sometimes there's going to be like a fan-made solo. I find that like quite a lot of games that don't actually have a solo mode have a fan-made solo mode and some of them are really good, so. Aiden, you're thinking of the, the wrong game. Trash Pandas is a different game than Trash Talk. But I could be wrong. Did Daryl work on Trash Pandas too? Yeah, not Trash Pandas. Yep. Okay, so I do get to go up one reputation. Woohoo. That then gets me. Oh, I get another caravan upgrade, y'all. Heck to the yes, I do. We're pumped. Okay. Caravan upgrade. Boom. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I can't use this side because this side um, is for the barter action and you can't have more than one um, of these caravan upgrades. So, ooh, choose an unused Ignis reward tile and place it here. Oh, <gasps> cool. Okay. Love this for me. Okay, so I think I'm going to place this on repair. So this one can be placed anywhere. And what I'm going to do is, please hold. No problem, Leah. Okay, so there's these tiles. Okay, so these tiles here are Ignis tiles, and they actually allow you to um, change up the different Ignis rewards. So the Ignis rewards are here. So you can actually decide to cover these up and do some different ones. So this is actually telling me that I can choose one of these and I can place it onto here. So then whenever I take the repair action, I can take that tiles action before. So, um, two of the same color, go down one track to go up one track. Uh, I think I'm gonna do this. So this is going to allow me to pay one resource of any color to go up that coordinating track. So that's awesome sauce. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to be able to do that one. Should I maybe do I was going to do this one, which is take any two of the same color resource. Maybe not. All right. I'm going to do that one because I need to get up on these tracks. 
Ooh, I know I want My City Roll and Build as you can play uh, that solo. Yeah. I loved My City Roll and Build. Still loving it. It is wonderful. Okay, so that was me putting up that. I'm getting my hair everywhere. Um, so then, because I place this here, I can actually take the explore action again. So what I am going to do is... I'm simply just taking the explore action. I don't think I do the rest of this. Um, Sam, if you're still in chat, um, so when I get to this action here, so I placed my uh, influence here. Do I immediately just do this action here? Or do I put this here, I finish off taking these two resources, and then I go back to the top and do it all again? Or is it just that I'm doing this and then I finish off the turn with this? What the heck is Balatro? Aiden, what is Balatro? Do I even have that game? What is Balatro? Balatro. Why don't I remember this, Aiden? <laughs> what is Balatro? <laughs> oh my lord. Okay. We'll wait for Sam to... He might not actually... Uh... Maybe, maybe it's in the rule book. Okay. You'll like it, trust me. Oh, good lord. Okay, so what Sam said is you just do the explore action... Then you finish off the rest of the relic action. Okay. So that's what I thought because you place this down here. You immediately do the explore action and then I finish off with this one here. So what explore action do I want to do? So I can now again move. Now it's a new video game. Oh, oh, was that the one that you were explaining to me at level up? Maybe you weren't. I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so I am going to move. I think I'm going to move to here. And I can do up to two of these things. I can only perform one of them, actually. So I'm going to do this one, which is I'm going to spend two red. And I am going to gain this card here. And unfortunately, I don't have two yellows to flip it over. But I am going to just put it here, like so. So now I'm going to be able to get three of my choice, which is awesome. Okay, uh, so that was that. I got that. We're good to go. So then I finish off this action, which is I gain three of my choice. And I'm going to gain three reds. One, two, actually, yeah, I'm going to gain three reds because I believe I can now do this, but I have to take this action in order to do that, I believe. Oh boy, okay. Uh, no, it just came out five days ago. I know you'll hate the concept, but I think you'll love the game. <laughs> mm, I don't know about that, Aiden. I don't know about that. <laughs> okay, so that is everything for my turn. I got my three resources of choice uh, because of this here. So we are now finished with that turn. We're going to go back to Nim. Nim is going to push this over. They are going to discard the rightmost card in the market. Boom. One, two, three. Green. Let's do green. Nope. It's a red. It's a red. <clears throat> okay. Totem of Courage. Ooh, I kind of kind of want to do that one. That sounds pretty good. All right. So let me go back to my turn. 
Let me go back to that. So I think I don't want to do this because I can't afford that as of yet. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to harvest and I'm going to do this again. We got a four, a two, and a one. All right. Ooh, do you know what I could do? Could do that. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to move up on the red track. Because I can't get anything to equal this. So... <clears throat> I wonder if... I actually might be able to. I wonder if... Decrease if die by one. Can you de decrease a one to a six? When is Worms Band coming to BGA? Honestly, I could see that happening, but probably in a long time. Sam, can a one be decreased to a six? And can a six be increased to a one? I don't I don't know why you'd want to well, I guess you would want to do that if you wanted a specific track. Let me know. <clears throat> I don't think it said anywhere. I don't think you could. I'm thinking that's a no. <laughs> okay. Um, so if I could do a six, flipping a die is the only way to turn a six to a one and a one to a six. Okay. So we cannot do that. So in this situation, I think I'm just going to add the one and the two together to get a three. So that's going to allow me to go up on the blue track. And then I'm going to get four blues. Go up once here and get one red. So I have one red and one, two, four blues. One, two, whoop, three, four. I need to, there you go, organize my, uh, my resources. All right, so. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I don't have any yellow yet. But that was that. I am now going to be able to place one of my influence here and get one resource of my choice. So I am going to get a yellow. Place that here. And then that is the end of my turn. Um, I will say that I'm unable to use this anymore. Um, the ones where you place um, influence on here, there's little dots beside it, and that's how many times you can use that. So this one has four dots, so I was only able to use it four times, so I've done that, and that is finished. All right. So it is now back to Nim's turn. So Nim is going to push this over. And they are going to advance once on each track. One, two, and three. Shoot, they've covered up this uh, red one. Oh no, that's not good. Um, okay, that's unfortunate. Okay, all right, all right, all right. All right. So I'm going to go to repair. 
I get to do this first. So I am going to spend one red to go up the red track. I'm going to go to here. Now, Sam, because I'm at the top spot here, does that mean I'm placing one into here or I do have to move up one more time in order to place it? I'm thinking I still have to move up once more in order to go to here. Let me know. Um, but this does mean that I do get a caravan upgrade. And that actually means that I have three caravan upgrades. So I do have uh, one of the global achievements, which is awesome. So caravan upgrade, I can add this one to my harvest. All resources gained this harvest are wild. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Okay. Or I could do this again and choose an unused Ignis reward tile and place it here. Um, ooh. I will say I don't have too many more influence tokens. So I would only be able to do this like once or twice. You have to move up one more time. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so I'm going to do this one. And I think I'm going to do it on the explore action. Now, I'm hoping that this might make it. So let me grab the tile that I want which is I get two of the same color. There we go. Put that there. All right. So like I said, because I now have three uh, caravan upgrades, I actually get to put an influence on three caravan upgrades. Boom. That gets me one reputation. We are halfway there. It's not great. It's my first game solo, okay? Everything's fine. Okay, so I've done my first thing. Woohoo. So I did this. I am going to repair. So I'm going to spend for this one here. I'm going to spend shoot. No, why did I think it was the opposite? I thought it was two reds and one yellow. No, I can't do that, dang it. This is really unfortunate. I might have to back up my turn here. Why did I think I was going to be able to do that? What a doofus I am. Shoot. Okay. Back up, everybody. I don't get my reputation yet. Give me my, my red back. Dang it. Dang it. So I took back my reputation. This has to go back. This goes back in the pile. So I can't take that action. Because I don't have the correct resources yet. So I was on harvest. So what do I want to do then? Hmm. Do I want to get one of these? Ooh, commenting a bit late, but yeah, I've heard tons of good things about Balatro. I do want to, uh, I'm interested now. You guys have gotten me interested. Okay, so unfortunately, Wait, was my last thing... I think I was actually on Explore. I'm sorry, friends. I'm all over the place. Was I on Explore or was I on Harvest? I'm pretty sure I was on Harvest. Because I remember saying that I can't use this anymore. 
And I just got my four blues. And I moved up. I got a red. And then I took a yellow for this. Okay. So I think I'm going to do... Okay, so I'm gonna get I'm gonna get my reputation in a different way. So I'm gonna go to explore. I'm going to move my caravan to here. That's going to gain me a blue. I am then going to spend one, two, three, four blues. And I'm going to get the caravan that I had before. I'm gonna place it here. All right, I'm going to get the tile that I wanted from before. All right, I now have three caravans. I can place out on my board that I have three caravan upgrades and I gain my reputation. There we go, there we go. Did that, all right. Back to my board. So, still have this covered up, sadly. Um, I can place... Oh, cool! I can place my last thing out. All right. Um, so I placed my last influence token out. You're doing well, Jenna. Don't stress. Aw, thanks, guys. I appreciate that. Um, Sam, question. If I don't have an influence marker to place on a global achievement, can I not do it? <clears throat> or do I just take, like, another one? Because I don't have any influence tokens left, but I did get the uh, remove all of your influence tokens from your reserve. So I do have another global achievement, but I don't have any extra things. I don't have any extra influence markers. Bye all. Thanks for the stream, Jenna. I will catch up later. Have a great day. Jade, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for hanging out. I appreciate it. Hopefully you enjoyed and hopefully you have a good rest of your Sunday. <clears throat> so I do get to do the explore action again. Oh, hi guys. Hey Sam. How are you? How's it going? So I'm thinking, let me actually check. Um, oh. You can pull from explore locations first to satisfy quests or achievements. Then Ignis if you don't. Okay. So I have to pull from a location. Because <gasps> oh. I know what happens is once all of Ignis is full, um, obviously, this would happen more in like a multiplayer game, but once Ignis is full, so once all of these are full, they all get taken off. Um, so once you don't have any in explore locations. Okay, so could I take it off of the one that I'm at right now? I'm assuming so. Um, and then I get to place it here. Whoop, whoop. And then I move up on the track. We're at six. We're at six, y'all. This is great. This is really great. Okay, so I am now going to be performing the explore action again. So what I could do, this would actually, oh, excuse me. <laughs> what I could do is I could actually, um, Um, I hear you are from New Hampshire. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. We are based in Nashua. Cool. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do 
is I think I'm going to use my explore action. I'm going to move to here. I am going to again grab spending two reds. I'm going to grab another one of these basic relics and I'm going to place that right here. I can't spend the two yellow to flip it over. So I'm going to place this here and that actually fulfills my other quest. So we'll go back to my board. I now have uh, a group of three green upgrades below any action column. So I do have three below this action column. So that means that I successfully have this one. I do have to take this off of here and I get another reputation. Woohoo! Look at me go. We're doing great. We're at seven reputation and we're pretty close to, oh yeah, she's going to take another spot here, which is fine. It's fine. Slay, I'm from a few towns over. Oh, that's awesome. Sam, join voice chat, you monster. <laughs> that's what you meant, lol. <laughs> okay, so I think I now get to finish off this action here. So I'm going to be able to take four resources of my choice. I am going to get, I need to make sure I have what I need. So I'm going to gain one yellow. Actually, I'll get two yellows and one red. Is that what I want to do? Sure. Yeah. Let's do that. So I just got, oh wait, two yellows, one red. That's only three. I'll get another yellow. Just in case, you know, just in case. All right, so that is everything for my turn. It is now back to Nim. I think we're getting pretty close to me being finished um, because I'm gonna get one here. If I can do maybe the barter action, I could get another one from placing influence here, if you guys can see that, in Ignis. Um, I'm nearly home and need to focus on getting off the bus with my crutch and food shopping. Bye. Bye, Leah. Have a good rest of your Sunday. <clears throat> okay. All right. Let's see what we can do here, everyone. So it's Nim's turn. They are going to go here. The next highest is going to be placed onto here, sadly. All right, and then all four of these get pushed over. I should be able to finish off this in like the next maybe three turns, four turns, we'll see. But I, I definitely, I think, will be able to beat Nim, which is pretty good. All right, so my next action is going to be Repair. I'm going to spend a red to go up on the red track. That's going to get me my fourth and final caravan upgrade. Flip it over. This can only be placed on the repair action, so I can't do that one. So I have to do this one right here. And that's just going to get me some resources when... Holy, I've got a lot of upgrades. That's pretty cool. Um, the cool thing about this game is that, like, your caravan is always going to be different every single game. Um, I really like that. So I have, like, all the four caravan upgrades. Sometimes in a game you won't get any of them. Sometimes you'll get one. Um, sometimes you'll focus more on the upgrades down here. Um, I think it's just very cool how it's going to change every single game. So, um, yes, went up on my track here. 
got my caravan. I can now finally fix this here, which is two yellows and one red. All right, and I can either keep this or I can discover a relic and keep it. Uh, you may also gain its sell reward. Discover a relic and keep it. You may also gain its sell reward. So what I'm getting from this is that if I sell this right now, I'll be able to take the top one off of this and then I can keep it and also gain its sell reward. You may also gain its sell reward. Is that right, Sam? Discover a relic and keep it. You may also gain its sell reward. So I get to do both things from whatever random card this is right here. Or do I just keep this one and then every time I do the explore action, I can spend three blue to gain a sell reward from a relic in the market. So I could gain a sell reward from here. That's pretty tempting. Because discovering is when you just pick it up from here. <clears throat> Bingo. Okay. Uh, I think we might do that. I think I might do that. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to sell this one instead of keeping it. I'm going to get whatever this is. I get to keep it and do the sell reward. Boom. Oh, okay. So this is move three influence from the main board to your influence pool. Oh, interesting. Okay, I like that. And I can place this wherever I want, right? Or I think it still has to go into this column. And then I also get to discard a relic from the market and gain its sell reward and discard bonus. Oh, dang, this is cool. We be chaining some stuff right now, guys. So I get to keep this one, which I'm going to keep it. And then I can discard a relic from the market and gain its sell reward and discard bonus. All right, you know what we're doing? I'm going to do this one. So this is, I can discard any amount of resources to go up that coordinating track any amount. So I am going to simply spend one red to go up the red track and that gets me one. Woohoo! Okay. And then it's discard is I get to go up on the yellow track. Not great, but I'm still going up on a track. It's fine. All I wanted to do with that one is, is I wanted to finish going up the red track. Cool. Awesome. We love this for me. All right. So then this gets tucked. I'm pretty sure I have to put it underneath this one, which is fine. All right. So then I could spend a blue... Oh, Aiden, best board game you've played in the last week. It's probably Red Cathedral. That's what I'm going to guess for him. Or Heat, maybe? Heat pedal to the metal? But knowing Aiden, I think he probably would have liked Red Cathedral more. Not sure, though. Okay, so I could... I could spend a blue to relocate, but I'm not going to do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to discard. So this is for this here, which is I'm going to discard a blue to gain three reds. Guys, we're getting close. So I gain three reds. <clears throat> Jesus. Gain three reds, and then I'm going to spend my five reds. One, two, three. 
four, five reds. Now I'm going to put an influence on here to gain my ninth reputation. I've only played one. What do you mean, Aiden? You played Red Cathedral and Mind Up on Thursday. Or do you consider... Do you consider Sunday as the starting of a week, Aiden? In the last week. Wow, never mind. I've played way, way more than that. Time doesn't exist. Oh my gosh, Aiden. <laughs> How many games did you play last week? It's Sunday. All right. So, I have to take one off of one of these quests. I think that's what Sam said. You can pull from explore locations first to satisfy quests or achievements. Um, then from Ignis, if you don't have any explore locations. So I could just take one off of here, Sam. I could just take this top one. Because if I do that, then that's going to make it easier for me to get these again. Am I able to do that? <clears throat> Dead. Sunday is the first day of the week. How could it not be? Monday. Monday is clearly the starting of the week. Let me tell you. I did really like the Red Cathedral. Yeah, I really want to try that, Aiden. We should play it. Nice, I want to try that and White Castle. Yeah. I also played Cosmoctopus and really enjoyed it. I'm going to make a resource track for it, though, because half the game is fiddling with resource tokens. Yeah. So, Sam, am I allowed to do that? Am I just going to take it off of the track? <clears throat> Starting from the top? Started from the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> Good lord. Why does my voice constantly leave me? <sighs> so I'm going to do that. I'm going to take from the top here. If I'm not allowed to do that, then I will take it from somewhere else. But we're going to do that. I then get to go up once more on reputation track. Heck to the yeah. Pretty sure I got... How many? I've gotten a lot of reputation in the last few turns. I'm very proud of myself. Uh, you can take all three from that column. Oh, okay. Beautiful. And then do I just like put it back in my pool? I'm assuming that doesn't mean that, like, my global achievement gets taken away. Just so it isn't confusing. And since you already completed that column. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Got it. All right. So, that is everything for that turn. I completed all of that column. Um, let me go back to... Actually, it's Nim's turn. And I've lived my whole life with Sunday as the first of the week, but I just wasn't thinking. I was going to answer based on the last seven days anyways. <laughs> the global achievement stays and you will just keep the excess on the side. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That makes sense. All right. Ooh, Jenna, my fractured sky finally arrived. Nice. Nice, Aiden. You're just like getting all of your Kickstarters now. Exciting. Okay, so Nim's turn. They are going to roll a die and move their little thing. They're going to move to number two. So they're going to go from here and they're going to go up to here. All right. Now, I can actually... 
I think I am actually going to... Am I able to do that anywhere here? I don't think I can. Shoot. Um, I was hoping to get myself back to Ignis, because then I could just put an influence up here. But... Hmm. What do I want to do? What is my best option in this situation? Because like this here would also get me the game because I only need one more reputation, right? If I'm able to get it this turn, that would be freaking fabulous. But how do I get it? Not sure. Um. Ooh, do you know what I could do? I could try to go to harvest. Let me actually move you guys back to my board. I could go to harvest. And I could try to get 10 resources in one turn. Because I can get three from here. Mm, no, I don't think I can do it. Because the most resources that you can get from doing this is going to be six. Because you're going to be using a die that's a six, seven, eight, nine. Unfortunately, I cannot use this bonus anymore. That's unfortunate. Shoot. How am I going to do this then? I guess I could just do the explore action. Yeah. I think that's what I'm going to do. I might actually actually be able, I might actually actually, I might actually be able to get two victory points on this turn and get to 11. So I'm going to go to the explore action. All right. All right. Explore action. I am going to go to... Shoot. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. When you do the explore action, can you go to Ignis? Or the only way that you can go to Ignis is if you do the barter action. Can I decide? Uh, I think it's only the five locations for the explore. Explore. Yeah, so it's only the five explore locations, the four that are placed there, as well as the uh, one that's on the board. So you cannot go to Ignis. Dang it. Dang it. I'm from Brazil. I love you. Thank you so much, Lucas. Appreciate it. How's it going? <laughs> Um, if I played a lot and end up loving it, I may look for a used deluxe copy. Mm. A mid tier for acrylic tokens would have been nice, yeah. So unfortunately I can't go to Ignis because my plan was that I was going to, I was going to move to Ignis and then that would have allowed me to spend one yellow to put one here. And then once I got to here, I could take all three of those yellows off and I could get another reputation, but that's not going to work. So 
Is there any location that is going to get me resources? No, because I could have also one, two, three, four, five, six. I would only be able to get six resources. Um, okay. I don't know why I'm like trying so hard to get two, <laughs> two victory points right now or two reputation points. Um, if I go to barter, I'm still not going to be able to put down an influence, unfortunately. So that's still not going to get me that. But I could do barter and then on my next turn go to explore. Repair a relic from the market. Oh, could do that as well. The only thing is I'd have to pay. I only have two yellows and a blue. That's not going to happen. Actually, there's that one. Draw two cards from the market deck. Sell one, return the other. Oh, but I'd need a red for that. Then never mind. Can you guys tell I'm like trying to <laughs> really do it now? Um, remove an influence token from your board. Oh. Okay, so I was on repair. And I'm trying to decide out of these three which ones I want or which one I want to do. Um What do I want to do? Do 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 do. I need to, so I could do that. That tile, move down an influence track three spaces and gain a reputation point or move an influence token from your reserve or relic to your influence pool. Carl. So because I've already made it up to here, when an influence token moves to the top of the track, move it to the leftmost reputation spot, it can no longer be moved down. Okay, so that answers my question. So I was wondering if I could go here. Um, this location allows me to move down three on a track to get a reputation, but this one is already at the top of the influence track and you can't move it down. None of these are able to move down three. So, I think I'm just going to do the explore action. I'm going to go here. Um, I'm going to, yeah, because that's just going to make me put an influence there. Okay, so I'm going to move. I'm going to get two of the same color resource. So let me do, let me do two red. All right. I do the explore action. I will move, I guess I could go there, or I don't want to move there. Remove an influence token from your board. I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go here. I am going to remove an influence token from my board. Ooh. So I'm going to move, remove one of these, put it into my influence. So I now can do this one one more time if I want to. Um, and then I am going to spend one yellow to put out an influence onto this space here. All right. Oh, hold up. I think I might have actually got it here. Okay. Okay. And then I can put an influence influence on here 
to explore again. Might as well move to, oh wait, this one gets taken off. I think we're, I think we're at the end, guys. This one replaces here. This one moves up. This one goes here. I placed one on there to explore again. I am going to go to here. That's going to get me one of these for free. And I am going to place it just over here. All right, back to my board. Um, and then I'm going to get four of any resource. Let's get a blue, a red, a yellow, and another yellow. Sure. Okay. So those were my four resources of choice. And then I can move three influence from the main board to your influence pool. So one, oh wait, let me, let me show you, let me show you. One, two, three. Boom, boom, boom. Influence pool, completed that one, gets me to 10. Woohoo, we did it. I did it. That was great. That was great. Sam, genuinely, that is a great game. Like Joe, Joe from Board to Play have been has been telling me that it's a great game and I'm so excited to eventually play this game with Joe. Joe, we must play Everstone if you're still here. But holy crap, that was a good game. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, so I have made it to 10. That means that I have successfully beat Nim. And because I did complete it with getting those specific other two things, um, it told me that I had to keep a specific card and I had to store a specific card. If I was able to complete with those things, I got a three star. So I have successfully gotten a three star in this game of Everstone discovering Ignis. Woohoo! Look at me go! All right, and it's 2.52, so we had solid almost three hour stream, usual for me. Thanks, Jenna, I'm glad, I'm glad you enjoyed it. It's, yeah, wow, 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 very fun. I just, there's something about like that little bit of like a race with the reputation and trying to get there with the solo mode. Um, obviously in a multiplayer, it's also a race because you're trying to be the player that gets there the soonest. All right. Let me know if my audio is okay. It should be okay. Um, but there's that little bit of like a race. And then I'm just a huge fan of like quests and like personal goals and stuff. So I really loved the like quest cards. Um, yeah. Anyways, friends, um, thank you all so, so much for hanging out with me today on this Sunday. I'm so, so happy to be back. I already, what I've decided to do is I'm going to try to like pre-plan some streams going forward. Um, and then for videos, what I've decided to do, um, this week, if you're part of my Patreon, in the past, I've always posted a weekly schedule, usually on like Monday or Tuesday. And I've posted a weekly schedule of like videos and the exact day that they're going to go up. Most of the time, the exact days, I'm going to admit, sometimes don't happen um, for various reasons. If editing takes me a little bit longer than I think, which most of the time it does. Um, if ever like a publisher wants me to upload a video on a different day, different things like that, things kind of change every once in a while. So what I've decided is moving forward with my schedules, I'm going to not so much do a like a definite schedule of like, hey, this video is going up on this day. This video is going up on this day. It's just going to be a coming up on the board game garden. And I'm going to be posting the next few videos that you can expect and the next um, solo Sunday that you can expect. So that's going to be how I'm going to be doing it going forward. That I think will make it so... I am not 
putting too many expectations on myself. I've I've discovered that I've been doing that a lot recently. Um, and it kind of stresses me out and I don't want to be stressed. So I'm going to do that um, to hopefully diminish some of the stress because I never want to like tell you guys to like expect something on a specific day and then it just not happen because a lot of the times that's what happens and I feel really bad for it and it stresses me out immensely. So that's going to be that. Um, but anyways, I do have the next solo Sunday schedules. Um, I am going to be posting like the, the scheduled live streams. So you guys know about it more in advance. Um, I will be putting up a poll um, probably tomorrow um, for games that you guys want to see solo here on a live stream. So expect that if you're part of the Patreon or if you're a YouTube member as well. Um, and yeah, I do have next solo Sunday scheduled. It's going to be uh, Kinfire Chronicles, uh, Van Glory's Grotto which I was supposed to live stream last Sunday, but that didn't end up happening because I needed to finish a video. Um, so yes. Anyways, thank you all so, so much for joining me today. Um, a huge thank you again, Sam uh, McDavid Games uh, or McDavid Publishing. Thank you so much for sponsoring today's live stream. Um, definitely go and check out Everstone Discovering Ignis if you guys have not already. Um, I will put it in the chat, exclamation point. Come on. Exclamation point. Nope. Exclamation point. There you go. <laughs> Sponsor. There you go. So I will have the link in the chat if you guys want to go and check it out. If you're watching this after as a, a video, I will have the link to Everstone Discovering Ignis, Discovering Ignis down in the description box. You guys can go and click that if you watch this and Everstone seems like something that you would enjoy and want to add to your collection. Definitely recommend going and checking it out. Um, but yeah, again, thank you so much, Sam, for sponsoring. Um, and thank you all so much for hanging out with me. Hopefully you have a good rest of your Sunday. And good job, Jenna. Thank you so much for TAC. I appreciate it. Um, have a good rest of your Sunday, friends. And I will see you guys in the next video, whenever that is. Um, and yeah. Bye, friends. Love ya. See you later.